Hello and welcome. It's Alicia from the Chardon Sign Shack and I'm coming to you from Chardon, Ohio. I am the ambassador for the Stencil Smith, which is this absolutely wonderful company. And today I am actually out of town. Um, I'm going to go to my nephew's track meet. So I'm doing a recording ahead of time. And then so you'll when you'll be watching it, it won't be live. Definitely it'll be like hashtag replay. But as you're hopping on, as usual, if you could do this, I would really appreciate it. And so would April and Pete from the Stencil Smith. This is what helps us get out there and um, other people will discover what wonderful quality stencils the Stencil Smith has on top of their thousands of designs. So um, I'm not going to be like hopping on, say hello. You could still say hello. I appreciate comments all the time. Comments and likes and loves are always appreciated. Um, today we're going to be doing two stencils and I'm going to be stenciling pillows. So this is, it's going to be welcome. Well, not welcome. Ah. This is my code, Sign Shack, S-I-G-N-S-H-A-C-K. And you can use this and get 15% off any of your orders. And then also the two stencils that I'm doing, which are number 8833 in a medium and number, um, I'm reading, there. it's like not mirrored. It won't be mirrored till I do it. So 8139 in a 14 inch. Those are both of the stencils that I'm doing today and I'm using today. Those will both be 20% off today and tomorrow. And then if you use my code again, Sign Shack, you'll save an additional 15% uh, off. So you're getting 35% off your total order. Um, and that will be t uh, today and tomorrow, which is Tuesday and Wednesday. And I'm going to show you the stencils and we're just going to get started right away. This is a little strange doing a pre-recorded because... I don't have all the chit-chatting back and forth like we usual do. So usually do. So already I miss you girls and guys if there's any guys out there that join. Um, so the two stencils we're going to be doing are, let's see, this one. Okay, this one I think this is just absolutely beautiful. Um, it's the little things that make life wonderful and the beautiful birds and the wreath. And this is something that you could use many elements from, even just with this stencil. You could use it as a whole. I'm gonna put it on a pillow. You could use this, it would look beautiful on a round for a door hanger. Um, you could use the birds in different uh, designs. The wreath would also be beautiful to use other places as well. And then of course, the quote would be beautiful on anything. I just love this one. And this one is, let's see, as I said, this one is 8139 and it's 14 inches is the one I'm using. And then the other one I'm going to be doing on a pillow is, and if you've ever ordered from the Stencil Smith before, you know you can get your numbers. I don't know if you can see that, but on the sides of their uh, stencils. They're engraved, the size, everything. So this one is number 8833, and this is a medium. And there's multiple different sizes from the Stencil Smith. So you could, um, you could definitely, you know, order larger, smaller. And then if there is a size that you need that she doesn't have, just email April at info at the stencilsmith.com and ask her. Um, because this one is just an example. I've showed you this before. I think the biggest this came in was a 24 inch and I needed one for a porch leaner. So she made it much bigger for me. This is on a one by 12 and it's uh, five feet long. So, and the person is gonna, that's gonna have it, it could only go to like a four foot stretch, which took it to here because the letters would have looked too weird if she stretched it more. So I added a couple elements down here and the girl definitely wanted a five foot board. So this, don't want to hit the roof, down here, she's going to just place like a plant in front of and that'll look really nice. Let me just set that down gently and I'm going to set that over there. 
And again, these are the stencils we're using today if you want a screenshot. And then I'll have the uh, links above listed in the description that you can always click on to order. And don't forget to use my code SIGNCHEF. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Let me find my piece of cardboard here. I think we'll do the B1 first. I really like this one a lot. And I think, I haven't monkeyed with it, but I think if you did this on one half, like if you wanted a really big B, and then you flopped it over that way, you could have like a whole really big B. I think the two halves would make a whole, if that makes sense. I haven't tried it out, but I'm guessing it would. So let me just get started here. This is right here, the one I'm gonna use first. I got these on Amazon. These are FIMO is the ones I've been buying. And this one is really wrinkly and I have ironed it, um, all that stuff. Um, the white one ironed up way better than the yellow one. I don't know why, because I always wash them. I pre-wash them and then I ironed them for shrinking. The only thing I would not recommend um, iron or washing beforehand would be the tote bags you get off Amazon because they either shrink horribly or they wrinkle up so bad you can hardly stencil on them. They're, they're not good to do that with. Um, so I thought this yellow would be a fun color and this brand has a bunch of different colors. I think it has a really nice red too, which I'm gonna make some Christmas pillows on as well. So let me just get this. They have a zipper in the back and I'm on the wrong end. And once I stretch it over the pillow, it's not gonna look as wrinkly as it does now, but I was kind of disappointed with that. Like I said, I ironed it. I ironed it with some steam even. Um, it just stayed a little wrinkly. So you want to put cardboard between your fabric so it doesn't bleed through to the other side so you don't have a design on the front and the back. And I'm going to flip this over like that. And then... And I like the tag of the, this particular one has a tag. I like that facing down so the letters go down. And these are on Amazon and they were 18 by 18, just to give you an idea how much they shrink. And I washed it on cold, no detergent, no fabric softener. I just washed it and dried it. Um, so it would, you know, do its shrinking. So this is now, it was an 18 by 18 and it is now a 17 by like 16 and a half. So they do shrink considerably, so keep that in mind. So again, the first one I'm gonna use is this one. Be kind, honest, humble, wise, grateful, happy. And this again is another design where you could use the B, make a whole B. You could use any of these words in different things. You could use all of them. It would be something you could use in many different places. So I'm gonna angle you down and we're gonna get started right now. And I've got my cardboard cut a little smaller. And I do have, for some reason when I was ironing it, I got this little like stain on this yellow one, but I did check and I didn't wanna have to iron another one. The yellow uh, where the black is gonna go for the B is gonna cover that. So I am not that worried about it. So I like to kind of just eyeball it to lay it out and see where it's going to be because you want it kind of centered on a pillow. Make sure it's, let's see, two and a half. Make sure it's about straight. It looks straight to me. And then I'm gonna use painter's tape. I don't use any adhesives of any kind, but I do have this painter's tape here. And I'm gonna tape it down right here. And I'm gonna get close to this little thing here just to protect the pillow. Cause the one thing about fabric that is a little hard is once you get paint on fabric, it's not so easy to get out. 
and I'll put a piece of tape there just because that wing is so close to the fabric. Okay, I'm gonna set this other stencil over here in pillowcase. We'll work on that next. And I'm gonna get me a little bit. I have, I usually use Fusion Mineral. You can use any water-based acrylic paint you want. It's just what I choose to use. I really like it. And this is coal. This is their really uh, dark black. They have another black that's called Ash. And I love that color. It's kind of, um, it's a black, but it has great undertones. I love it. Oops. Yep, got a lot of paint. That's way, way more than enough. See how much paint I have there? A lot of that's gonna be going back in the bottle. So I have my stencil brush here and I'm gonna get my shop towel. Let's see, here we go. Fold this one over. You can use paper towels, shop towels. You could offload on your paper plate. You could offload on your craft paper. I like a shop towel. You can use it it has many, many, many different uses, and you can open it and then open the inside. Um, you can, they go a long way. I know they're a little bit more expensive, but they do last long, I feel. So the trick to stenciling, if you're new to stenciling, and if you're new to stenciling and this is your first time joining me, please uh, let me know. And if you have any questions, either if I don't see them in the comments, Message April at info at stencilsmith.com or on Facebook through the uh, Messenger app, or you can message me um, at Chardon Sign Shack and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Sometimes you don't always see them and they get lost in the algorithm. So the trick to stenciling is you wanna get paint on your brush so you get it nice and loaded up there. You don't have to get it like all the way up the bristles, just on the bottom. Bottom, I'd say like quarter of the bristles, something like that. And then you're going to offload them. And that's where your shop towel comes in. And I'm just offloading that. If you don't offload, you're gonna get bleeds. So I thought this was a pretty yellow. And because there's some larger spaces here, usually like here, see how I'm just swirling away? Perfect. It works great because the areas aren't as large, if that makes sense. Now, if this was a t-shirt, this is a fairly reasonable sized, um, reasonable kind of, uh, I don't know exactly what the material is, but like t-shirt material, if you've ever tried to stencil on t-shirt, that is a lot more difficult. It can be done. Um, I learned the hard way. Sponging is the best thing for that. I don't necessarily like to sponge, but there are times when it certainly comes in handy. So again, I'm just getting more paint and I'm offloading and I like to swirl. I love, love, love to swirl. To me, it's very common. So what I'm talking about with these larger pieces here, like these won't be as hard because they're smaller. And I do like to kind of hold where I'm stenciling down with my fingers just to give it a little extra support. So for any reason, it doesn't slip up underneath there. Like these are all okay, but these larger pieces, you're gonna kind of want to swipe because if you swirl here, the fabric will bunch up underneath and um, it'll move because there's just so much fabric. So you're much better off on these larger sections to just kind of swipe it. And it's gonna be the same thing. Now next week, I don't know if you saw all the wonderful uh, new releases that April just came out with for doormats. We're gonna be a, doing a doormat stencil. And I did find with the doormats, it's a little easier to, um, to kind of swipe with them because of the material. It's such a rough material. And plus it's hard to get it taped down really super firm um, on the doormat. I'll, I'll be showing you that next week. Whoop, I forgot a little piece here. So I'm just gonna set that aside for a minute and find where I left my heat gun, which is way over here. Okay, and I'm going to give it a little 
dry. Just giving it a quick dry there. Um, the thing with stenciling is you use such a little amount of paint that you don't typically have to dry very long. And of course the fabric absorbs it pretty quickly. And I think bee themes, they're, they're really popular in uh, home decor right now. All things bee. Okay, so we're gonna go for a second coat. And another thing, when you're drying on your stencil with your heat gun, make sure you just don't like stand over it. Move it around. And I'm not pressing down too awful firmly. And this is probably gonna take at least three coats of paint. It's better to, you know, go back and do layer after layer rather than have bleeds. And I mean, sometimes I still have bleeds occasionally. It happens. I get careless. I forget to offload. You know, I'll get distracted. That kind of thing. So let's just swirl that in here. But I thought this would be a really pretty color. And like I said, they have a bunch of different colors on Amazon of these pillows. And the size is 18 by 18. And then you can either put them over existing pillows or you can order the forms as well on Facebook. I know with these, it'll give you a link like to the forms that go with it. They'll say, you know, like order this and you might want to order this too. You know, it gets you. So I placed two orders already since the beginning of May with the stencil smith. And then all those new uh, doormats came out, which they can also be used for signs, not just, and they can be used on pillows, not just doormats, but all those uh, wonderful signs came out, the, the doormat ones, and they're so funny. Um, I'm gonna be placing another order, I think. <laughs> I'm sure you girls understand. And once you get into the stencil smith and you start going through all their stencils, I've said it before, it's like going down the rabbit hole. Love, love, love it. It's so fun. So let me just get these on here. And again, I'm swirling in these smaller places, but I'm still putting my fingers down to give a little bit of pressure, you know, holding it down. Just like so. I thought it was gonna be warmer than what it is today. Um, it was really nice yesterday. It was about 70, I think. It was very humid. Uh, I don't think we were supposed to get rain. I think we might have had a minimal amount. I'm not sure about that. I can't remember. But today I went outside. I had to take my dad to the doctor's this morning. And I just had on a short sleeve shirt. And boy, it didn't take me long to head back inside and get uh, a sweater. Because it is uh it's like damp feeling damp cold you know it's supposed to get up to 60 something it's already 60 now but it feels it feels chillier than that i don't know why so again i'm just going to kind of swipe on these bigger sections or you can pounce i'm doing kind of a little of both and just just like that so I kind of miss talking to everybody. That's part of the fun of doing the lives. You talk to people when you can. Sometimes I miss a lot of the conversations because by the time I look up from what I'm doing, um, I, there's a conversation going on that I did not see the beginning of or something like that. So that's always fun. I think it's fun how you girls get to know each other through the lives and become friends. I've met so many friends through the stenciling community. 
And even though I haven't met any of them, like, in person, I really feel like they're my friends. I feel like that, totally. I value all of you. Okay, so I'm going to put my little brush in here with a damp, uh, damp wipe for a minute. And I'm going to dry it. And again, as I said, when you're drying it, you want to make sure you're not, like, right on it. And you're moving it around because you can warp your stencil. It is very, um, they're very durable. I order the 10 mil. I know some girls do like the blue, the 7 mil, but I love the 10 mil because it's, um, it's a little more durable. It's a little thicker. And as clumsy as I am, sometimes I forget when I'm cleaning them. You know, there's some areas you have to be so careful around, um, like a capital N, for instance, or W, stuff like that. There's little pointy things sticking out, and I just, I'm, you know, scrubbing away softly, but I just, you know, that's just the way I do things. My husband says I'm always in a hurry, and I just need to slow down. But like if I slow down, I don't know if I'll get everything. I still don't get everything done in a day. So this is going to be our third coat. And I think if this was a white uh, pillow, I wouldn't have to probably just do two coats. Because black typically covers really easy. But it's on a color, so that can make a difference. Sometimes when you're stenciling like on wood and I stencil on color, especially like if it's a black background or maybe like a really dark blue, something that's dark, I will put a coating of white like over the whole thing before I start stenciling Say I want to stencil a red on top of it or a green or something like that because it um, it makes it more vibrant. It makes it, it makes it show up. If you just stencil that black or if you just stencil that color, unless it's like a white or a really light color on black or a very dark background, it doesn't show up as much. So that is helpful. That has been helpful to me. That was a helpful tip. I learned early on in stenciling. So does anybody have any plans like coming up vacations or anything like that? We were supposed to go to California in January and May, but my dad has been a little sick. And then I think I told you last week that my sister um, had some complications with her leg. And it's not my sister, Heather, that many of you may know from her uh, her page, Sawdust Dogs. It's my other sister who lives here close to me. She usually stays with my dad when we go out of town. And she uh, did a compound fracture to her leg in December and the metal um, came apart that they put in her leg. So tomorrow they're uh, taking the metal out. And then she has to wait, I think three weeks, two or three weeks, and then she's getting her bones fused in her uh, like leg ankle part. So she's had a really rough road of it. Um, but anyhow, she's the one who stays with my dad. So we've had to cancel our vacation a couple times. And the reason we go to California is not only is it a beautiful state, which it is, I love all the national parks out there and stuff. Um, and just the beauty of the mountains and the ocean, everything about it is really pretty. And, uh, but, it's because we couldn't get anybody to stay long enough with my dad. So my daughter and my uh, brother are going to take turns staying with him. And we're going to get away for just a little bit. Um, we're going to go see my nephew in a track meet. He is running the 4 by 400 I think I'm saying that correctly. And he's running it um, in a team. And then he's running it by himself. And I want to say... I think his team is right now in the number one spot or something like that for state. But they have, they have regionals on Wednesday evenings, so we want to be there for that to see him. And they live about four hours from us. We're in northeast Ohio, um, up near Cleveland. 
and they are in South West Ohio, um, in the Dayton area, but uh, close to um, Cincinnati, not too far from Cincinnati, about probably as far from Cincinnati as we are from Cleveland, but they're considered a suburb of Dayton. But anyhow, so we're gonna go do that, and then we're gonna go on to Tennessee. Um, my husband has been wanting to see Sergeant York State Park for a long time. We're big into national parks and state parks. Like whenever we go anywhere, that's typically why we go on our vacations, other than if it's to, you know, to see people, which of course we do that too, but we love the national parks. We're so lucky to have all that protected. Um, we've been to so many so far and I'm kind of a nerd. I take my little passport book with me. They have a little passport book that you can get stamps at every, every park you go to. Um, trying to think what my favorite, one of my favorite, oh gosh, that's so hard to, to say. I love, of course, everybody loves the Grand Canyon. That's just so beautiful and wide open. Joshua Tree was really cool. Um, I didn't expect it to be as neat as it was. And honestly, it's not so much about the tree. The trees are really cool, but the, um, the rock formations, they're amazing. Really, really spectacular. And um, I think we're gonna go to Cumberland Gap National Park while we're gone now. Probably the most sobering park I've ever been to, the one that just left me in in tears. And I don't know that it's a national park or it's a national monument, because we have a lot of, you know, national park, national uh, monument, national historic society, stuff like that, was going to see uh, Flight 93. And I think it's in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. We went and saw that la a couple summers ago and we went to Harper's Ferry National Park. That was absolutely beautiful. But that's our thing, that's what we like to do. Oh, I love this, isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it, love it, love it. And it is a real little wrinkly looking. I hate to iron, I did iron this though. I know it doesn't look like it. You should have seen it before I ironed it. It was really bad. But like I said, once I put it in a pillow form, it'll pretty much take the wrinkles out. I don't know why. That one was a lot harder to get the wrinkles out of than the um, than the white one, which is kind of strange, right? So I am big on closing bridges. You don't, excuse me, you don't have to do that. Oh, and I think I mentioned something earlier. Seal your brushes up in a bag with a wet wipe. You can, I don't have mine wrapped around it, but it helps them from drying out if you're gonna use it again on a, you know, on a project. Um, but I really like to close my bridges. I like to encourage you every live and show it just in case there is somebody new doing it. Give it a try and it is easier when you start with black than a white. White is, is hard sometimes to, to fade in but I get this, this is a brush I got off of Amazon. These were like for micro painting, I think. And this, it came in a pack and this is the Zero. I really, really like this brush. So far, I have ha not had any issues. Sometimes you have a brush, especially a liner brush and it'll split in the middle. So this has been really good so far as of yet. But I just, where the bridges are, I just kinda like go in and connect them right just like that and I always get a little paint on the brush just like this but then I'll take it off not like I do a stencil brush but just kind of lightly because you don't want a big glob of paint just laying on your project and sometimes this is you know, I'm doing this upside down. Sometimes upside down is easier, but it just depends which way you're going with the letter. Sometimes I move things all around when I'm closing the bridges. So there's the P and it really doesn't take too long. This black, I may or may not need two coats because I'm getting it on pretty good like the first time, but it makes your piece look more finished. I think it gives it a more finished professional look 
rather than looking stenciled. You don't have to do it. I didn't do it for years and I still sold lots of signs. But it's just one of those things, now that I've started doing it, um, April encouraged me to do it and she wanted me to teach it to you guys. And I can't not do it now. It's just not a finished sign without the bridges closed to me, but that's just me. So I'm just gonna do, I'm not gonna do my next sign. I'm not gonna close them on you, but I'm just gonna go and show you that it doesn't take that awful long. Make sure your hands, you know, I've got paint on mine, but it is dry. Make sure you don't have wet paint on your hands. Um, you know, on a, on a sign, like on a wood sign or canvas, it's pretty easy to take a Clorox wipe, a wet wipe, and wipe it off like right away. As soon as you do it and it comes right off. Fabric, it's not as easy. Fabric, like once it's, although I have to say, I had, it was the last live I did, I made the little uh, dog hangers, hangers, leash hangers, and right before the live, I shook up a, a bottle of paint, of black paint, I think it was this coal paint, and I should have put my finger over it. Usually I put my finger over it when I shake it and I wasn't thinking, but they are like self-sealing so it shouldn't come out. It came out and it went all over the garage, all over my signs. And I didn't realize until I was doing laundry um, last night that I had paint, black paint on my um, jeans. And I put it through the wash and I was pulling it out and I saw the black paint. Well, I put some spray and wash on it and I scrubbed a little, you know, never put anything in a dryer because then it's set. And then um, I thought, well, I put uh, Awesome on it because that's what I used to clean my stencils with. And it cleans them really good. So I sprayed some Awesome on my jeans. The spray and wash didn't take it out. And I used my little scrub brush that I use on my stencils and I made sure that it wasn't like full of paint, like I rinsed it out first and stuff from, you know, whatever. But it took it right out and then I put it through the washer again and the stain absolutely, completely came out. So if you ever get paint on your clothing, that might be something you would want to try the awesome. And it didn't fade my, um, my jeans at all, not one bit. Cause I thought, well, I might as well give it a try you know, I've already got black paint on it. Like, what do I have to lose? And it took it off absolutely 100%. So that was a nice, you know how sometimes you find things by accident? That was kind of just one of those things. I was standing in the laundry room and I had my awesome right above me. See, I got a little bit on that B right there, but I'll just make it a little bit thicker there is all I'll do. Just change the shape of it a little bit to not make it look like an accident. And I have them. I've been doing this for years, but I still have them. I mess up. I'm human. And if you go a little wide, just, you know, do the whole thing. That's all. But black is a good color to start with if you're gonna close bridges. So see, and I've just got these two right here to do. Not taking that much extra time, but it makes a huge, like if you look at this compared to this with all the little stencil marks. Ooh, my leg. I have had the awfulest time. <laughs> March 1st, I hurt my heel. And I found out I have plantar fasciitis, which I kind of suspected I did just because my husband had it. And I know like once you sit down and you get up, it's more painful. And um, all the, I just knew what the signs were. And um, well, I had been having really severe pain in my right heel. And here I had tore my fascia muscle. I got a bunch of micro tears in it. 
And let me tell you, that is some painful stuff that will humble you. <laughs> Especially when you're like me and used to be in, I'm sure most of you are, you're on the go and you're doing things all the time. It really slows you down. And um, it's been quite painful, but I got these, I'm not supposed to go barefoot and the heel is still very painful um, and it comes and it goes just when I think, oh, I finally gotten better. It, it, it's like, no, you're not. I was just giving you a break for a minute and teasing you. But, um, I got these, my daughter saw these sandals on, uh, Facebook or I don't know if it was on Facebook somewhere and they're called pillow slides and they're supposed to be like for plantar fasciitis. And I bought a pair. Well, I bought two pair. I bought one for, they were like, buy one, get one 50% off. And I bought one to wear outside and I bought one, the reviews were really good. And I bought one to, to wear in the house, like just the slippers, cause I'm not supposed to go barefoot. See, look how beautiful that is. Oh, and I want to connect the bridges over here. Like where the little uh, legs are. And probably right here and here on the body. I don't know. I think I'll leave that. That'll be like a yellow stripe maybe. But I am going to connect the wing here. And, um, but I bought these pillow slides. And they are really comfortable. And at first I put them on. I was like, ooh, I don't know. It kind of hurts still. And then by that evening I was like, I'm having no pain at all. And I'd been having pain for like two days. The next day, the same thing. I wore between my tennis shoes with my Curex inserts and then my um, those pillow slides. They're not the cutest shoes, let me tell you, but they, they're okay. Feeling great. Like I wasn't having any pain at all. Last night I was getting ready to go to bed and I got out of my chair and went to stand up where um, and put my shoes on and I got a big blister from them. Because, I mean, they're sandals. I don't want to wear them with socks. But So now I have a big blister on top of everything else. So it's like you can't win for losing sometimes. So hopefully it'll be all, like, healed up when I go. Um, when we leave tomorrow. It'll be better anyhow because we want to do a lot of hiking uh, while we're gone at the parks I mean that's to me that's the most fun I don't know what do you like to do on vacation I love to go to the beach not per se to like swim in the ocean or anything but I love everything about it you know it's just a beautiful beautiful thing to do I'm going to connect right there I think and then call it a day sometimes when you start connecting on something like this an animal it's like okay where do I stop but I'll just connect that there and the rest I'm going to leave open. But I think that looks really good. What do you think? So I'm going to grab my pillow form over here. And I'll show you. Oh, I should show you. So, um, let's see. I keep my iron out here. But, like, to heat set it, you would either you could either throw this back in the dryer for 15 minutes on high. I would not do that because it got so wrinkly. But you could also take your iron and, and this just sets the paint and just set it on it. But you're supposed to, well, I forgot, you're supposed to put a towel so in between it. So you would put a towel and then I'm not going to do it right now. And you would just have your, your iron on and you would set it there. I think it's for like 30 seconds. And then you would move and you would do the entire design and that would heat set that but I'm not worried about that right now. I wanna show you girls what it looks like in the pillowcase. I'll do that later. But that's how you would do that with the iron, but make sure you have a piece of fabric in between. So I'm gonna take, see I change mine seasonally and I box them up and put them in the attic. This is my one from the spring, those carrots we did on the uh, welcome to my garden sign. So I am gonna take this one out of the form, and these are the forms I bought on um, Amazon that were like recommended with the pillows. And then I, I've got this really nice pillow case, 
and I just zip it up because I've got my Christmas ones and all that stuff, and then I sell them too. And so then we've got the uh, pillow, and we just I just fold it up and put it in the attic with the rest of my pillowcase collection. So they store real nice, so you don't have to, have to keep buying these over and over unless you're selling them. I just change them out seasonally. I want to try to get some, um, they have some outdoor ones that I'd like to get to try. I think this would be, especially this one in particular, would be a really cute outdoor um, pillow. And they have some I saw on Amazon. I just didn't get a chance to get them for the live. I think that would be really neat to stencil up a pillow for outside. And then you just get your uh, pillow in there. And these, these pillow forms, they come flat on Amazon and then you open them up or you open even one of them and then they puff up pretty quickly. It's like we have a, um, I can't remember if we have a Casper or a purple mattress. I think it's a Casper in our spare bedroom. Really comfortable. When those first came out, we bought one for in there. And it was funny, we ordered this full-size mattress mm -hmm. And it just, you take it out of the bag and it just puffs right up into a mattress. It's bizarre. Okay, so there is, get it zipped up. Hmm. There we go. Fold that back over. And then pull it. I might have to straighten it out a little bit there. But isn't that the cutest? That is so cute. And this would make such a good um, a good circle, you know, good door around. It would be pretty on a door around. It would be just pretty on a sign. Um, it'd be pretty on everything. So I'm going to set this one aside. So this one on, is on sale. This one is... I think it's the 8833. This is the medium. 20% off today and tomorrow. 15% more with my code sign shack. And let's get our other one and get stenciling. So it's the same thing. And this was a white one. These are really pretty. See, these iron up much nicer. I don't know why the yellow ones didn't iron up. But then when you put the pillow in, they kind of smooth out. I usually like to use starch when I'm ironing, but I didn't use starch on these at all. You know, maybe after I would, but certainly not before I stenciled on them. I don't know how that would react with the uh, paint and stuff, but these are real nice pillows. And they come in like a, I think you can buy them in a four pack. Um, something on that one well hopefully it's where something's going to cover it up so again you put a piece of cardboard between it because you don't want to um you do not want to bleed through to the other side of your fabric and i make sure if it has a tag that the tag is pointing down and then i'm going to get my stencil thought i had it Okay, maybe it's underneath here. It is, huh? I would have been looking all day for that. That's part of my problem, I can't find things. And I'm semi-organized. And again, it's the same thing. I'm gonna place, try to place it kind of in the middle. Eyeball it. And I'm gonna tape it down. Actually, just gonna, I don't know what I did with the tape. Here, let's see. Get some tape here. Just like so. And, okay, need a little bit more. And I'm gonna do this middle in black, and this is the 14 inch. This is number 8139. 
and let me get my brush here. Hey, I'm pre-recording a live. I'll be like another 15 minutes-ish, but you can go visit with Papa. Okay, I have some errands to run. Okay, you wanna go do that? Yeah, because I have to wash my car. The dogs have so many ticks, I keep finding them all over my floors. So Ooh. I need to get like- We're on camera. Hi, everybody. <laughs> my dogs ran away. You wanna come say hi, Finn? You wanna say hi real quick? Finn's here again. Look at you, here. See, here's Finn. There he is. I love you. Yeah, I'll be done in like 20 minutes. Okay. My daughter's early. <laughs> so, thank you for humoring me. And I am going to start with the black. I got it right up on my brush. And again, I've offloaded. I'm going to use the black for the words in here. And if you have any of these, these are really nice too, so you don't have to use a lot of tape, but you can like because it's so close, instead of using tape, you can just kinda, and again, this is small, a small size on this fabric, so I am just swirling it in there. And this is probably only gonna take two coats because it's on a white. And I am gonna give it a quick dry here, just like that. Well, real life happens. My husband went to the gym and my daughter wasn't supposed to be here for another 20 minutes. And she was early. I was going to go over some stuff about um, my dad because he is diabetic. And so she could go over, you know, how to give him his insulin and take his blood sugar and stuff like that. Just give her a refresher on it. And so I'm going to do a second coat here. Just like so. And I kind of, like I said, I kind of hold it down with my fingers. Just like so. And get a little bit more on my brush here. Come here, Finn. You'll be back in about 20 minutes? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go get that stuff and I really need to wash my car. Okay. Are you still recording? Yes, I am. Oh. They understand real life. life right, happens. friends? Life happens. It's what happens while you're making plans. Okay, so we got our black done. Oh. Uh, I forgot to get a brown. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Let me go grab a brown real quick. Hold on. Sorry about that. So I was gonna try and do hmm. <laughs> I could do yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put the black brush back just in case I need that. So I'm gonna need one more brush. I was thinking I was using three colors on the two pillowcases, but I'm actually going to use uh, four brushes. So I'm going to get this little brush here, and I'm going to get a little bit of this conservatory, this green, and shake it up with my finger over the bottle. And I'm just going to get a little bit of the green and offload. And I'm just gonna use this little piece of flashing and kind of move it around. And you could do this all in one color. You could do this all in black if you wanted. 
I just wanted to do a couple different colors. So with this flashing, see I'm able to manipulate and move this around really quickly, just like so, without having to do all that taping off, which is really nice. If you've ever had to tape a lot of stuff up, off, you would know. So just flip it over like that. And it makes life easy, these little pieces of flashing in circumstances like this. And you, like I said, you don't have to do this. I could have done the whole thing in like a green if I wanted. And then maybe gone back with a liner brush over the, um, yeah, that's two little leaves there. I couldn't tell. Um, you know, gone over it with a liner brush to just do a little bit of like shading with a brown. Could have done that. Maybe there's a bee in here. Go away. And he didn't look like, he looked like a wasp or something or a hornet. I don't know. I don't, I can't tell the difference between them. I just know it's not a bumblebee. It's not the nice kind. And this is Conservatory, the color green that I'm using. And it is um, Fusion Mineral. I really like their paints a lot. And one of the reasons I like them so much, they are a little, I, I would say they're more to like start up with just because, you know, you could buy a smaller bottle. I usually buy, I think it's the 16 ounce. Let me see what they are. 16.9 ounce bottles. And, um, but they last a long time, except for like my whites and blacks, because I, I use a lot of whites and blacks. Um, so that does not last as long. Let's see. I probably should have thought this through a little bit before I did it. I'm usually a big planner, but like I'm like just winging it now. And I mean, that's a fun thing to do too. Just wing it. And you can just move this around. Uh, I think that might be a little bit of, a little bit right there. And then, See, this would be a lot to try and tape off, but if you have these little uh, little pieces of flashing, which you can get like at your true value, they're five by sevens, or um, you can get them on Amazon too. They really come in handling and stenciling for just blocking stuff off. Very much so. Oh, you know what? I did that and that's the birds, huh? That's the bird's feet, it's not, but we can go over that. Let's see. Get that there. A little bit there. And there. That's the only one with feet that you can visibly see. Okay. 
But yeah, these birds would be pretty in a lot of different things. You could do so many colors with them. which I'm unsure what I'm gonna do now. I think I'm gonna do, there's a little bit of green right there. And I think we have all the leaves. Let me just take a quick peek here. Oh, there's a leaf, I think. No, that's a branch, I think. I think I've got all these, but I'm gonna set that brush aside for just a minute to make sure. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of the, what did I do with my brown? I just went and got. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. I thought I grabbed a brown. Well, see, this is coal. Oh, there it is, the chocolate, okay. Got too much stuff going here. And I'm going to get a little bit of this out. And this is the chocolate. And I'm going to do the branches in that. And it's the same thing. I'm going to get some up in my br bristles and offload. And then it would be just the opposite where I'm just... Um, you know, using the flashing to cover the the um, the leaves. I'm tongue-tied. And that is what I'm doing with that. And have you ever done something where you've done it and you're like, it didn't turn out the way you expected it to? This could totally be that way. This could totally be one of those. And the thing is, if you got a little bit of brown on your green, it would probably just like look like a little bit of shading, a little bit of dimension on your leaves is all. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. And so I'm gonna go like this. So I'm sorry about that, the, the pop-in, although Finn is awful cute. And he's at that sweet, sweet age. You know, he's three and just everything's such fun and new. And, you know, they run and give you the big, big hugs where they're just, you're like their whole world. You know what I mean. It's just the fun age. I love them all and they're all, it's so funny. You could have so many kids or so many grandkids, kids in general, and they're all different. Every single one of them. Just a little bit different. Let's see, get some more there. And I'm just kind of swiping this along the branches, and I may back, go back and do one more coat to make it a little darker. I'm not sure I'm gonna take a peek when I'm done. You know, just kind of covering. And like I said, if I get a little bit of the brown on the green, I don't think it's horrible. It looks like a little bit of shading, just like that. I got a little bit of, um, and you could just add a little bit everywhere. And it looks like a little bit of the leaves maybe turning kind of thing. There's no right or wrongs. This is your own design. It's whatever you want it to be. Everybody's tastes are different. People like different colors. I like a lot of colors. I have just found most of the time when you're selling things, like when you're gifting things, it's different. But when you're selling things, and you could actually go over your leaves a little bit 
which I may do with the brown just to give it a little dimension. But um, when you're gifting things, it seems to me, or not gifting things, I'm sorry, selling things, mostly the things that sell are uh, black and white things or gray, uh, like that, just because I think people can visualize them in their homes more and it's more neutral kind of thing um, where they may not see the colors in their home as much. So again, I'm just swiping and I would be swirling this if if I was doing this all in one color, but I'm not. I make sure I'm grabbing. Have you ever done that? You've grabbed from the wrong paint. You've got a couple different colors on your um, plate. <laughs> I'm sure you've done it. If you've stenciled enough, if not, I don't know. I have. I've done it multiple times. So I want to get a little bit there. And let's see, a little bit here. And I really honestly need a thinner brush for this that I'm doing. It would be uh, easier, but I don't have another thin brush. So I'm gonna just start up here and go a little bit, make it just a little bit darker, I think. Oh. Just like so. See, the easy way to go would have been to like just do this all in one color, but I wanted to try a bunch of different colors, see how it looked together. I thought a little pop of blue. And I'm not as much covering up now because I'm gonna do these leaves in just a little shade of brown just to give it a little bit of, that way if a couple of them are in there. Oh, that's looking pretty. Okay, I'm liking it. That way if I give it a little bit of brown all around, they look a little shaded. Yeah, I think that's looking really pretty. It just gives it a little uh, variation of colors. Just like so. just a little bit more green right there on that one on the top. I didn't get him real good. There we go. Okay, I think, yeah, I like that. Okay, so we got the words, the branch, and this wreath would be, look so pretty on many, many different things. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna keep all my brushes. I'm not gonna put any of them in water at this time. I want, let me find my thinnest, thinnest, thinnest brush, because I want to do a little bit of orange. Really, really thin. I don't have very many wee little ones. Let's see, that one's pretty thin. Okay. Let me get some orange over here. There we go. I want to put a little orange. He's got little feet here and his little beaks. So let me get just a little orange on my plate. And again, on my brush and I'm offloading. And this is where I'm gonna use my flashing again. You could totally tape it off Sometimes if you have two pieces of flashing, it's even better. 
Like I said, these come on a pack on Amazon. Then I want to make their little beaks orange. Like so. And I'm going to get his claws right here, or his feet, which I did not realize I was painting and I thought it was, um, huh, I thought it was the uh, tree branch. And then I got to looking at it, I'm like, no, those are claws, but I think only the one bird has claws. bit right there. Just like so. And then, oh, I need his other beak. Right there. And you could totally use tape on this if you wanted. I just find this a little quicker. Then off and on, off and on with the paint. I might put a little bit more on this beak. I don't know if you can hear the birds in my video, but there's a real loud one out there somewhere. Sounds so pretty, I think. We've got some doves in our yard, some robins. Um, some blue jays that's what we've seen so far okay so the bird i want to do in blue i'm going to try this one this is a new one from fusion or a newer one it's called willow bank i don't know if i can get the it would be nice if i could get the lid off so i didn't well that's one thing about these Ooh, that's way more than I needed, but this is a pretty blue. I think it would be a pretty blue on a bird. So I, again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm getting it up in my brushes. And the one thing I am, I don't know if I should tape that off with just, I think I'll tape this off with just a little where his eye is at. Because he's got a little white dot there. I think I'll make that just a wee little black and you know what? I think I can get around it. Let's try that. We'll see. I'm going to cover his eye right there. I guess his eyes could be blue. Okay, I need to move this. Hold on a minute. There we go. I've got to move the, the cardboard around. So I'm gonna, again, oh, that one's bent. Cover his little eye, his or her. Let's say they're a girl and a boy. And I wanna be careful down here around his beat or his wings. And that branch right there. This is such a pretty bird. So I'm just taking a little extra care and around the eye and the beak there. And see how I'm swiping on the larger spot? because it kind of moved there. Okay, I guess he would look okay with blue eyes, but I think I'm gonna give him black eyes. I'm gonna try that anyhow. And you could do this all in one color, like I said. I really, really like this blue. This is a really pretty, look at what a pretty blue this is. I love this. Blues are my favorite color anyhow, any kind of blue. Um, Green would be my second favorite color. Okay, and again, I am trying to mark off his little eye. Well, let's start there with his, 
These are so close, I may have to take that one off. Let's see. Just for a minute, because that's different. The beak and the eye. There we go. Okay, I'll pull it up. And then right there. And I can use the little piece of flashing right there. Yeah, the smaller, like little, and I, I'm gonna have to move this down, I think a little bit right there, because it's the same thing that, you know, you have to cut the uh, cardboard smaller than what you're working with. Okay, I'm gonna do another coat over here on this bird. I gave it just a little bit of time to dry in between. And I am going to And again, you gotta kind of swipe in those larger spots because it will move. The smaller, smaller little pieces, they're pretty good. And you wanna kind of hold it taut so it doesn't move all over the place. And I'm gonna go like so, so we can get the blue in there. And we're going to do the other one. So let me kind of, how did I have that? Might have been like that. There. I had that, so that, and the beak. move that cardboard around it's giving me a hard time I move it <clears throat> excuse me I move it on one bird and um, it's on one bird but then it's off the other when I go back so I'm having to move it back and forth I should have cut it just a little bit bigger but hindsight's 2020 right so I want to get the rest of the bird here. Let's see, right there. And then blocking off those branches and leaves. And right there, I'm going to block off his beak. Oh, I think it's going to be really pretty. I dropped my flashing. Okay, so I need to go back with my black and put an eye there. And it's got a wee little place where, like, the white of his eye will be. It's cut out. I may have to get a much... I probably could do my liner brush. I don't have a really super... That one's got green on it. Let me see. Well, this one's a lot, a lot smaller. These aren't the best brushes here. I, these ones here, I got them off Amazon. Excuse me, but it's a little smaller. So I'm gonna get some of that black again and offload. And try to get his eye right there without And I hope that's going to look good. I think it is. There's that one. And then 
Let's see. This side. And this side. And then we're going to tape that little guy right there and get that little eyeball right there. Okay. I think I've got everything and I'm ready for the big reveal. Hopefully all these colors go together nicely and it looks really pretty. So we will see. Oh, get my tape off. Oh, I do like that. What do you think, girls? Do you like that? Oop. A little bit of... And if there's something you're not happy with, you can always go back. I think that's really pretty. So I'm going to take this out of my pillowcase right here. Just like so. Like that. And I'm gonna put the form on it. And I'll show you how cute that looks. I need to open it. So this is what they come in, but once you open one, they all get all poofy. So let me open that. I should have this open for live. And like I said, you can also, if you have old pillows that you want to change, um, like I've got some on my bed that I like to change out. So you could also, you know, put them. I love the one. Um, I think April just put up. I'm going to order it to put on a pillow. But it's called Be Our Guest. I think it's like you could use it for the doormat or she had a sample of a pillow or a sign, but I hope it wouldn't be too bad to put it in your guest room, just as a joke, like be our guest, but not for too long. I think that's what it says, something like that. Such funny ones she has out. So I'm gonna get this in here. Oh, I know you're not supposed to take these things off. What is it like on mattresses, the tags or something? It's a federal law. but certainly makes it easier. Who wants all that stuff in their pillow, right? And I'll just have to go back. I'll take it out later and uh, close the bridges on it. Oh, that's, I really like that. I think that's really pretty. I'm just not gonna do it now on the live because we already closed them on one pillow. Let me get it zipped up and I'll flip it around. Close that. Yeah, I think this is really pretty. I really like that. Look what a pretty pillow that makes. Wouldn't that be pretty on like your front porch? That's where I'm gonna put mine on my front porch. Look at the little birds, everything. I think that turned out really good. So, and I love that saying, I do have to close my bridges. Um, I really like everything about it. I don't think I would have done anything different. You know, you could do different bird colors. And like I said, you could use all these elements. So we did this one today. And we did this one today and we closed the bridges on that one. So see how much difference that makes when you close the bridges. And then these don't have the bridges closed yet, but I will close them after the live. Well, it's not really a live, this is a pre-record. I'm so used to saying after the live, I'm gonna do this or that. So these are on sale today and tomorrow and they're gonna be on sale 20% off. And the sizes I used, you can screenshot that. Screenshot this, or there will be links above. Uh, number eight eight three three. It was a medium, and number eight one three nine, which was a fourteen inch. Okay, so you've got that. You can screenshot that. And if you haven't and you've watched this, if you wouldn't mind doing this, sprinkling us out, we appreciate it. 
And if you're new, if you haven't followed my page, Chardonnay Sign Shack, or April's page, uh, The Stencil Smith, make sure you uh, follow both of those. And as usual, it's weird because nobody's here. I wanted to show you a couple stencils before I go. Um, let me hang this back up, I guess, behind me. Okay. So this, we did a bunch of dog stuff last week. I'm going to angle you up for a minute. So we did a bunch of dog stuff last week. I did my dog hangers. And um, so this came after the live, but I got this specifically for one of my customers. Um, they rescue dogs. Uh, one of my best customers, she drove, uh, ooh, to, I think it was Ashland, Ohio from here. She drove about two or three hours to pick a bunch, bunch of dogs that came from Kentucky and um, they take like two or three dogs in at a time and they get them, nurse them back to health and stuff like that. But I thought this was so cute because they, they rescue the animals and then they send them out to good homes. Peace, love, rescue. And again, you could use all these words in different places. The elements, the peace sign, I love, the heart and the paw print. You could use those all, not just in this, in different places. And that's number... I don't know, number uh, 3290, Small Rescue. And then they have Peace Love Dogs, Peace Love Cats, too. Because I realize there's a lot of cat lovers out there, too. This, with Mother's Day's coming up, there was a couple of things I thought would be cute. Even though it's coming up really soon, for your mom, you know, now or any time of the year, definitely. You know, don't forget us grandparents, but I thought this was so cute. I'm going to make this and hang it above our door in our garage. Grandkids welcome and parents by appointment. What do you think about that? I love that. And that's number 1281. And this is a small. And then we have this one. Crack me up. Well, they all crack me up really. Thou shall not try me, mom, 24-7. And that's number... This would be really nice on a towel. 5908, and it's a small. And then, of course, this one. This one is so funny, too. would be great on a towel. That would be a nice gift. Why do they want dinner every single night? Isn't that the truth? Why? And that's number 8726, and this is an extra small. Perfect for a, uh, one of the flower sack towels. And these were just a couple other random ones. Uh that I got this last, like I said, I've got orders coming almost a couple times a week. Let's not tell anybody. Um, this is number 4678, and this cracks me up. Uh, never laugh at your wife's choices. You are one of them. Isn't that the truth, girls? Don't laugh. And then this would be cute on a towel as a sign. This is number... Six seven five eight small, and it's Alexa. Do the dishes, feed the kids, fold the laundry, clean the bathroom, pour more wine. Excellent. If she could only really do all those things, right? And this one, of course, I got to make for my daughter, and then I think it would be a really cute one that would be a good seller. I live in a madhouse run by a turn tiny army that I made myself. Is that not adorable? And none of these are on sale with the others, but these are all ones that you can get anytime with my code Sign Shack, S-I-G-N-S-H-A-C-K. You get 15% off your order anytime when you order with that code. And of course this, and don't we all wish this, I wish everything was as easy as getting fat. Is that not the truth, girls? All I gotta do is look at food at this age and I gain weight. It's ridiculous. Um, I have it all together, but I just forgot where I put it. And that is me in a nutshell. Uh, let's see. That's number 8794, and that's an extra small. And then just one more. I truly, truly love this saying. Um, I think it's so true because we never know what tomorrow will bring. But life is short. Take the trip, buy the shoes, eat the cake. That is the truth. So that is number 6231, and that's an 8-inch. So 
And again, any of those you can get anytime with my code SIGNCHECK, S-I-G-N-S-H-A-C-K, and save 15% at checkout. And then these, again, are the ones that were on sale uh, today and tomorrow, 20% off with my code SIGNCHECK. It's an additional 15% off. And um, you can... Uh, so you're saving 35% on those. And even if you have these, maybe you want another size. I have got multiple stencils in multiple sizes because you never know, right? There's some I like for like the mini blocks and then you get a little bit bigger like the seven and a half and they look really good on the uh, flower sack tails. You can get bigger size, little size. And if there's a size that you don't see that you, um, that you want, email April at info at the stencilsmith.com and she mostly usually can accommodate you so you take care and have a wonderful week and i will see you next tuesday live here at 4 p.m est and we'll be working on some really cute doormats thank you bye bye